Okay, so this is where we're picking up from last. Okay, so here on June 10th, okay, we looks like we, we received um, an item. Okay, what did we receive? The coffee grinder and um, the uh, coffee maker that we ordered for. Good. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, bill or invoice, right? Okay, so it looks like we have both of them, and it looks like we have some tax on them, and it looks like we also applied a down payment. All right, so a few things that we're looking at here on this bill, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this bill. So we're obviously not going to pay now. Okay, because the bill comes out to be a total of $2,634. Uh, we're not going to pay. We're going to choose to pay later. However, what did we buy? Do we have an account for these items? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to check out the chart of accounts. And what accounts are we looking at? So one fifty ten. One fifty ten for the coffee brewer. Good. And what else? Good. Okay. Um. All right. So good, we have the accounts that are necessary to journalize this transaction. But first, let's go ahead and use, uh, check out our purchase orders to validate that we received our coffee brewer and grinder. Okay, so here we are. We received our coffee brewer grinder. What invoice number is this? 351. 351. So there we have it. We ensured that we received we received the items. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our journal and let's journalize this. Okay, so a few things that we know here is we know the date. All right, we know that we received a coffee brewer and a coffee grinder. Okay, and those accounts was 1510 and 15020. Okay, and let's see. So here we're given the actual price of each item. Okay, we're also given the tax on it. Okay, so therefore, actually, wait, before anything, let's go ahead and read the second part. So the second part says what? What do you know? What do you need to have to be done with these items? Uh, additional work for the grinder to work. Um, you need the foundation reinforced and electrical needs to be upgraded for the grinder itself. Okay, so what I want you to do here is I don't want you to put place them in their um, accounts just yet, okay? Because there's a few things that we need to do to these items, right? And the second thing, too, is I'll let you guys know ahead is that the next portion is that we have to solve for um, including the shipping fees, okay? So for now, what I want you to do is because we have an incomplete task, right? We still have to modify one of the uh, machines. What I want you to do is I want you to place it into miscellaneous suspense, okay? Because in this case, um, I want you to just dump everything there because... We're not ready to place everything into the coffee brewer or the coffee grinder because they're not done yet. There's still a few fixtures and a few things that we have to do in order to um, officially move it into the coffee uh, grinder section. So in this case, I want you to move everything into miscellaneous suspense. Okay. So we are going to move everything into miscellaneous suspense okay all right what account number is that 19990 
Okay. And with that being said, right, we also have we also have a down payment that was applied to the invoice. All right. So therefore, right, the amount that we owe is significantly less. So how do we journalize that? Yes, we're going to redeem our voucher, okay? So, prepaid accounts. And what else? Accounts payable. And we're going to record the exact bill amount that we owe. Okay? So, um, prepaid account should be 18600 20000 And 20000 Okay? Excellent. So here, let's first talk about how much the total bill is, okay? And then let's talk about how, so how much was the total bill? $3,806.02. $2,634. Yes. Okay. Sorry. You, you're Three. About the total, total. Three thousand eight hundred and six and two cents. Yes, three thousand eight oh six oh two. Good. How much was the down payment that we wrote a check that them out for? Eleven seventy one eighty seven. Okay. So therefore, how much should be my bill? There you go, 26, 34, 15. So by just doing the simple calculation here, I verified that this calculation is correct, okay? So here, I'm gonna dump everything into miscellaneous suspense because I want to, all right? And uh, because I still have to do some extra additional, um, I have to include a lot of extra costs in order to get the um, asset into service. So right now, I'm just gonna dump everything into miscellaneous suspense. Okay. And here I have pretty much all my information, right? I have the vendor, Haley Rose. Okay. I have the invoice number, which is 351. 351. Okay. And um, I'm also given terms, right? 115 net 30. Okay, so 1%. 15 net 30, okay? Um, any information here you could place in here. Once again, um, you can indicate that you purchased a coffee grinder and brewer, but that's the note that I'm going to place in my miscellaneous suspense. So there, I should be good enough to complete my transaction here. Okay? So now that I have all this and my numbers are all figured out, Next step I have to do is update my ledger, okay? So here, first thing that we see is we're gonna update our miscellaneous suspense. So here, we're gonna add everything, both coffee grinder and coffee brewer. So let's see, miscellaneous suspense, here it is, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and indicate the date and I'm gonna actually indicate how much each item was for, okay? So, again, I'm placing in my coffee brewer and my coffee grinder. So my coffee brewer was 2266, okay, 2266, okay? Brewer was for 2266. And my grinder was for twelve forty nine ninety five. Twelve forty is it forty nine forty five? Twelve forty nine ninety five. Twelve forty nine ninety five. Okay. Um plus Okay, so plus, let's see, uh, my tax was 209, uh, 20, 
297 cents of tax. So 290. Okay, I'm having trouble remembering these numbers. 290.07. Okay, 290.07 tax. Okay. And again, this transaction has happened on July, uh, uh, excuse me, general journal number three. And we are increasing it by the $3,806 and two cents, right? If you have your formula in here, it should automatically calculate that you should have now from zero to a positive, or in this case on the debit side, $3,806.02, okay? So that's just entering into miscellaneous suspense. Now the next thing I have to do is now I have to take away my prepaid because I am redeeming my voucher or I'm taking this prepaid down payment amount and it's going against my invoice or in this case my bill. So here 310 uh, 610 and then I'm going to go ahead and write um, down payment applied to invoice number 351. That one out? I'm sorry. Prepaid accounts. Prepaid accounts. Okay. And we're doing it exactly how we see it in our journal. So I just completed my miscellaneous. So next is my uh, prepaid. Oh, where'd he go? Okay. All right. No worries. Okay, so here uh, was general journal number three. Okay. And I believe we accredit it for the 117187. Okay. So therefore, it should bring your account back down to $6,654.17. Okay. Something wrong? Yeah, my numbers aren't matching up. <laughs> Did you forget to insert something or remove something? Um, Are you, okay, we're on prepaid accounts. Yeah, I'm on prepaid accounts. I don't think I had, what was that last June 10th one that you had on there? The uh, down payment applied to invoice number 126. Uh, where did he go? I'm not the only one that saw that, right? No. It pops up and then he, he okay, maybe it's right here. Oh, let me see. And work is not pending. We have seven students here. Add a person. There you go. All right, hello. Okay, so going back to this. So uh, were you able to find, did you end up getting the same number? Okay. So here we just entered in our uh, prepaid 
right? Our down payment has been applied to our invoice. So then the next one that we have left is to insert our um, bill in our accounts payable account. So here we have it. We're going to go um, 610. And we got the invoice number 351. Okay. Same thing, general journal number three. And this time we're increasing on the credit side for the $2,000. $634.15. So therefore, you should now have $11,863.90. So already there. Okay. It is a lot of money that we owe. So now that we've completed this right here, okay, we entered in our last um, account in here. So now we need to go to our subsidiary ledger because we received a bill. And let's go ahead and fill out that billing information. So let's go to my vendor. I believe this is Haley Bros. So all the way down uh, uh, in the middle, Haley Bros. Here we are. Okay. Once again, this is... 6, 6, 10, okay, we have um, Coffee Brewer and Grinder. Okay. Um, invoice number 351, General Journal number 3, because that's where the transaction is. Now, terms. Were we given terms? Yes. 115 net 30. 115 net 30. 1% if 15 net 30. So in this case, what is my discount due date? Uh, June 25th. June 25th. Good. All right, and then what is my actual due date? Would it be July 10th? Yes, perfect, July 10th. So again, if you do, if you use the formulas in here, it does take the calendar and actually consider all of those extra dates and stuff. So don't worry about that, okay? Uh, did we have a prepaid account, an amount? That's correct. 87. So what was my bill? The what was the, my entire bill for originally before I had the payment? 35 uh, 38.06.02. Okay. So once again, if you applied the formula dragging all the way down, it should show that you should have a remaining balance due for $2,634.15 which was exactly what the statement bill um, said it that we owe, okay? So that's how I want to use this table, okay? Here, we made a payment because that was, the, that was the original invoice, right? That's what they told me I had to pay. This is now I'm applying it, and it's going against my original invoice to now reflect that I have a new amount, okay? All right. I'm missing something there with the formulas. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's going to be your invoice amount. Okay. Minus your prepaid. Minus your returns. Minus any discounts. Minus any payments. Okay. What's the total you get then? $26.34.15. Okay. Wait a minute. I've got something... Let's see. Get out of the way. Okay, wait. Prepaid amount. Nope. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Hold it. I didn't. Did you hand type in the invoice amount? Hand Yes. I typed it in. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that's what I missed. Let me. Uh, 26.34.15. Okay. Okay, yeah. No, I didn't. That's a formula. So I, that one's supposed to be already copied, but I hand typed in the invoice amount. Yes. 
Good. So you matched. Okay. Yeah, but now um, I have one other question. Go for um, it. For the first date, like I understand for the uh, for the date due, but what did you add? How many days did you add to get the other one? This one? Uh, no, for the 25th of June. This one, I just took the this date and added 15. Oh, the 15, okay. Yeah, because I, I in this case it it makes it makes it makes a little more sense to just do it that way instead of having to think. Okay, so how many more days does it make it to 30, 15? So instead of doing that, because I will have different numbers going through the discount due date. So in this case, it's better to just use your terms. Okay, my discount due date's within 15 days. If not, the whole thing is due in 30. So I just keep it consistent by marking the original date and just adding whatever section they belong in. Okay. So this one is the original due date. So the date that I copied here plus 15. This one is the original due date plus 30. I didn't just click the next one over and added 15 because it's it, it, it can change depending on what the terms are. When, I, when you were on that part, my Excel for us, so I was, I got, I missed it. Okay. That part. <laughs> got you. All right. So that's how we use the subsidiary ledger, and that's how I want you to use the subsidiary ledger, okay? So when we apply discounts, that's where we also have to take a look at the given situation as well. So once again, um, that's how I want you to use the subsidiary ledger, okay? So we completed three worksheets, right? We didn't deal with inventory, so we can go ahead and continue on forward, okay? So in this case, this scenario, right? I received my fixed assets. However, I didn't move them into their proper accounts yet because I still have some fixtures and some things I need to do to the machines, okay? All right, so the next scenario. Okay, let's see what happened here. What is this? I delivered. Yes. We had a separate shipping cost, a separate shipping company that says, hey, what happened here? What what condition are these type of deliveries? Freight expense. Okay, not freight expense. What? Not FOB. Let's take a look at terms. COD. Okay, so if it's COD, what does COD stand for? Cash on delivery. Cash on delivery. So this delivery company is a third-party vendor that says, "Hey, I delivered your 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 equipment, so I need you to pay me for shipping out these items to you." Okay, I want the I want to be paid now. So in this case, let's take a look. Right, I have two machines. Okay, in this scenario here i'm gonna assume that both machines are equally heavy okay so i'm telling you that you're gonna split the shipping in half for each one but let me ask you this where are we where are my machines right now miscellaneous suspense miscellaneous suspense are both of them in there yes yes so in this case we're just going to dump the whole thing into miscellaneous suspense because there's no point to have to distribute the, um, the freight just yet. However, I do want you to note this. When we do calculate those shipment costs, I want you to divide it 50% to the coffee grinder and 50% to the, um, the brewer because that's the cost it took for those fixed assets to get to my store. It cost me money to ship these items to my store, okay? So, in this case, since I recognize that I've dumped everything into my miscellaneous suspense, so therefore, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna dump it into miscellaneous suspense, okay? So again, the date is still the 10, and we're placing it into miscellaneous suspense. which was account number 
1990 or something like that. Okay. And if we are paying them, how are we going to pay them? With a check, yes. It's cash on delivery. We don't have cash in our hands, so therefore, we're going to write them a check. Okay? For how much? $350. $350. Okay? okay. So if I have to write them a check, where do I need to go? My check register, okay. So, in this case, what check number am I gonna use? 1511. 1511, okay. For $350, to who? Uh, Valerie, <coughs> Valerie Delivery Services. Services. Yes, so we're making, we're writing the check out to Valley Deliver, Delivery services okay if you have a note section you could say for delivering the coffee grinder grinder and brewer whatever you'd like okay all right so we used check number 1511 okay so i'm going to go back to my journal and I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my description because we have a few things that we need to place in here, right? We dealt with a vendor named Deliver Ballard Delivery Services, okay? Did we get an invoice number with this? 301. Yes, we did. We have invoice number 301, okay? Check, check 1511. Check number 1511. And here's something you could add in here too. Why did you write them a check? You could say COD. Okay. All right. Okay. So, can you tell me what's the most important thing about this invoice here? Why is it important that you need to record this? That way, later on, we could add it on when we put the coffee in and grinder. Correct. And grinder to service. Mm -hmm. And it also validates that we actually receive the items and how we have a proof of it because of this. Okay. All right. So now that we complete our journal, okay, everything looks good. We can now go to my ledger. Okay. First things first is miscellaneous suspense. Okay. Here we are, miscellaneous suspense. So here I can write in the description or my notes that I got freight cost for um, grinder and brewer. And I'm going to do 50% um, uh, cost to each item. Okay. Once again, we are still on General Journal 3. We haven't reached the end of this one yet. Almost. We're almost there. Okay. Um, and we are increasing it by a total of $350. So therefore, now... By adding that amount in there, I now reflect that I have $4,156.02 in that account. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, we entered in our 350 things here. Um, is it necessary to place in any extra information such as the invoice or who delivered? You can if you like, but it's not really obligated here because it's not really relevant. Wait a minute, okay. it's not even close to that. Okay, what do you have? Wait, let me, hold on a second, never mind. I think I just found my 4156.02, okay. <laughs> yes, 
I didn't pull my formula down. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, these were from the previous ones. I pulled them down from original, but remember, sometimes Excel does this. Sometimes you need to wake Excel up and ha and maybe refresh the page or refresh that formula. Okay, because it does happen um, when you use too many worksheets, spreadsheets with too many formulas that it can cause it to glitch and not add up properly. Okay, so there we have it. That's my miscellaneous suspense. And once again, I wrote a check. So I got to go all the way up to checking. Okay, and I need to update my checking account because I wrote a check. Number 1511, okay? You can make an extra note here, whether it's COD, it doesn't matter because I could pull up that information by looking at my check register, okay? General journal number three, and once again, I have now wrote another check for $350. So now I have only $5,752.42 left in my bank account. So now I need to be very cautious on the next check that I write. I can't go over $5,000. Okay. All right. Okay. So now that I've entered in my last account here, what's next? Yes, okay. For any reasons that you need to have any discrepancies with the delivery services, you can complain if they accidentally broke your items. Other things that you can do is you can call them back up, especially if they're the one who delivered it. They're most likely, if you are ever gonna return your item, they're probably gonna be the ones that are gonna be picking up the item, okay? So Valley Delivery Services should be almost second to last entry here. Yes, it is. Okay, I put a blank one just in case you need it for any reasons. Um, but let's go. Here we are, Valerie Delivery Services. The date and what I'm going to say is delivered. Um, brewer. And grinder. Okay. Invoice number was um, 301. Post reference is general journal number three. And did we have terms? Yep. Yes, we did. It was COD. Oh, COD. Yep. yep. So I guess COD. Oh, and I forgot to also enter in the check number in my little notes here. Check number 1511. Okay. So the invoice amount was $350. And of course, we made a payment for $350. So if you guys remember the formula, once again, it is going to be your invoice amount minus any prepaid minus any returns, minus any discounts, minus any payments to therefore get you to zero. And with this one, since it looks like we're gonna be utilizing Valley Delivery Services, you can go ahead and pull that all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna do some formatting here, so catch up if you need to. Okay. Okay, once again, we did not use or the purchases that we made or this transaction right here has nothing to do with our inventory. So therefore, we don't need to use our inventory worksheet here, okay? Because we got, we purchased fixed assets and we're just 
looking at how much um, the freight is for delivering these fixed assets. Okay. All right, so here we're complete with our transaction. So let's see what has happened next. Right. We're taking the brewer out of miscellaneous suspense. Yes. So in this case, how much is this brewer going to cost me? Well, we already have a few okay. things here, right? We're going to split 50% of the freight cost here. We have tax that we have to deal with. So in this case, let's go ahead and figure it out. So on your miscellaneous suspense account, so let's go to your general ledger. On the side here, as you see all those numbers, right, is going to be where you're going to be calculating your total amounts. Okay. So here we are at miscellaneous suspense. So here, what was the total of my brewer? 2266. 2266. What's the tax on it? $186.95. 100, where did you get that? 186. Uh, yeah, let me, let me, let me clear these. Quite sure where these numbers belong. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna clear this area real quick. So um, I'm not quite sure where these numbers belong to, but let's talk about each and every single one. So here, I want the asset cost. So we should clear out those numbers as well. Yep, go ahead, go for it, because um, I'm not quite sure what those numbers were for. Asset cost, okay, we got tax at 8.25%, um, and we have the freight, okay? And you have your total, okay? So let's go ahead and clear these out, and let's figure these numbers out. So first things first is what was my asset cost for my brewer? The 2266, right? Once again, tax. How much is tax? One eighty six ninety five. One eighty six ninety five. Okay, so we round it up. So in this case, what is my what was my freight? If it's going to be 350 divided by 2, what's my freight here? 175. So your total here is going to be this plus this plus this. 26, what? 26, 27.95. Excellent. So here, that's my coffee um, grinder. Okay, so that's how much I'm going to be taking out from this miscellaneous suspense. And where are we placing it? Into the grinder. Into, not the grinder. The brewer. The brewer account. Okay, so we have, um, if you go ahead and scroll up, you're going to see that we do have a gr um, an account for that. So let's go ahead and... Journalize first, so since we figure out the figures, right, it's 26, 27, 95. So that's going to be our numbers that we're going to be looking at. So journalize this, okay. We're going to be adding our coffee brewer to the coffee brewer account. And we're going to take it out of miscellaneous suspense. So what was my coffee brewer account? 15010. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 
Okay. And what was the total amount again? The 20... So that's what we're going to be taking out from our miscellaneous expense and moving into our account. So here, it's up to you what you want your description to be. I can say move brewer out from miscellaneous account. Miscellaneous account. All right. And then you could say um, includes tax and shipping. Oh, okay, that's double, double, no, include, include ta uh, tax and shipping. Okay. That should be good enough that we are moving everything out and we are including the tax and the shipping costs. Okay. So now we are here at our ledger. Okay, this one I'll make an exception for you to go ahead and do miscellaneous first and then move everything into the brewer. So here I'm going to also right here make a note that I am moving um, coffee brewer out um, including tax and shipping okay. and once again we are uh, just ended on our general journal three here and this time we're going to be subtracting out the 26 27 95 out from this account so therefore in remaining in total right now is going to be your coffee grinder right at a total cost of 15.2807 okay so that's my coffee grinder with the tax and my um shipping divided okay however we're still not done with the grinder because we still have to do electrical work on it and we still have to do some, um, uh, was it electrical work and we have to build a foundation for it. So in this case, we're going to leave my coffee grinder because right now it's not done yet. We still got additional things because right now it's not ready for service yet. Okay. We don't have an electrical outlet. So how is it going to be able to uh, be put into service? Okay, so here, that's what we're doing. So, yes. So now that we took out the 25, 20, 26, 27, 95 out from my miscellaneous, I'm going to go ahead and locate that in my coffee brewer account. Okay. Which, okay, is... There you go. I got it. All right. So here we are. It is now the 10th of June. And this time I'm going to go ahead and indicate that this was the coffee brewer number two. Okay. You can put includes tax, whatever, but we've already noted that in the miscellaneous suspense. So here I'm just saying this is my coffee brewer number two. General journal number three, and this time we're increasing my account by twenty six twenty seven ninety five. So therefore, in grand total, right? If I enter in my formula, it's going to be up one. So my previous account balance, add any debits, subtract any credits, to give me a total of four thousand five hundred twenty seven dollars and ninety five cents worth of coffee brewers so that's both of my coffee brewers combined
So there we have it. We finished the journal and we finished the ledger. So I have a question for you. Do we need to update the subsidiary ledger? Well, we already paid for the freight, so I don't think we, we won't have to room. No, we don't because all we did was we just moved the brewer out of miscellaneous suspense and into its account. But we didn't pay, like, we didn't deal with the customer or vendor. Correct. This was considered a internal transaction. So this had nothing to do with anybody. This was just my books and my accounts only. So in this case, I'm just, this is an internal transaction. There's dealt with nobody. Okay. So there we have it. Therefore, we do not need to use our subsidiary ledger for this transaction. Okay. And again, we didn't deal with inventory. So there's no need to use the inventory worksheet. Okay. So let's see what happened next. Okay, so now that we have our moving our coffee. Okay, hold on. We moved our coffee brewer over. Okay, what, what's the next thing that we have here? Wired LV remodeling company to reinforce foundation for coffee grinder. Okay, so any transaction that needs to be recorded here? No, we just simply hired them. We haven't received a bill. We don't know if they completed the job yet. We just simply hired them. Okay. All right, so now it is now the next day, June 11th. And what did we receive a bill for? The original work they did for breaking down the storage. Breaking down the storage. Uh, journal 2 when they uh, they came in and did the remodeling inside the coffee shop. Correct. Interior design. Okay. So in this case, I had a subcontractor to come in and design my, uh, my store. So in this case, it's going to be treated as a subcontractor expense. I hired them to do one job, which is to design, to redesign my store. So in this case, what was the bill for? What was the bill amount? And when is it due? 1890. Okay. Four days. It's due in four days. So how do we record this? We don't record it because it's just in the journal because we're not paying for it. Well, if we're, but, but we received a bill. We're going to use accounts payable because we're not paying it right now. Correct. Okay. A job has been completed, but the question is you, you're not obligated to pay right away. However, you do need to report that you owe somebody money because a job has been completed. Okay. So in this case, you do. And I've um, already noted that because I hired this person to do some subcontracting labor, right? They redesigned my store. So therefore, I want you to categorize it as a subcontractor expense, okay? So let's take a look at your chart of accounts. What account number is subcontractor expense? 60510. 60510, good, all right? And because we're not paying it now, we're gonna be using an accounts payable, okay? So now we're done with this work sheet here, so we're gonna move on to the next one. So we're now we're dealing with general journal page four. So let's go ahead and journalize this. We are now on the 11th. So therefore, I'm gonna have subcontractor expense. Okay, so I'm gonna journalize my subcontractor expense. Okay. Um, you said it was 60510? Yes. Okay. Uh, for what amount? Uh, 1890. 
1890. Good. Okay. And therefore, if I owe them money, what account am I going to use? Accounts payable. For the same exact amount. We have all of our information here, right? We don't need to write a check. We don't have a purchase order involved. We don't, we're not depositing any money. So in this case, my information is, well, first off, who sent me this? I put LV Remodeling Company, and then I put the invoice number, 1754. Good. And then net four, because it's due in four days. And I just put a little note, interior remodel. Perfect. Okay. Due in four days, all right? And for interior remodeling, okay? Okay. So here, I've completed my journal. It's done. Okay. So now, what's the next step I have to do? Ledger. Yep. Now we got to update our ledger. So in this case, let me shrink it back down so we can maximize the visibility of our screen. Okay. So first account that we have is subcontractor expense. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that in my operating expenses. Okay. So it should be under um, labor expense. Here we are, labor expense. There it is, subcontractor expense. Okay. It is the 11th of June, and you can say um, invoice number 1754, interior design job. Okay. Post reference, once again, now it's general journal number four. Um, and we're debiting this account because it was an expense for the 1890, which because this is our very, very first entry in here, therefore it's going to reflect as the beginning balance, which is for the 1890. Okay, there you go. Fixing it up a bit, reformatting how I like it. Next account that I have on here is going to be my accounts payable. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and locate my liabilities. Here it is, liabilities. And I should have left off of my accounts payable. So I'm going to enter in my information. So it's this, the 11th. Um, we have invoice number 1754, okay, general journal number four this time, and now because we are increasing our liabilities, right, we owe more money. This time we owe another $1,890, so already we're not looking too good. We're owing so much money, but that's very typical of a startup company. You need to make all of these expenses in order for you to start operating a business and slowly you will generate the income and essentially pay back all those debt. But for right now, this is typical. We need to spend the money. The 30,000 was clearly not enough, but you know, luckily we had the vendor to customer relationship, right? That they allow us to give us an account. So therefore, now I owe a total of $13,753.90. Okay.
then I'm gonna take a minute and run to the bathroom real quick. Go for it. Um, Alan, did you have a problem? No, you know what? I'm, my, I'm having issues with the Excel, but I think what it is is when I'm going over and hitting my tab, I must be bumping like shift or control because like I just keep getting these weird things that keep freezing up and even hitting refresh does nothing until I get out of the page, then back into the page. So I'm okay. It's just frustrating. Got it. Got it. Um, so yeah, most cases are usually, is your tab key your, um, quick, one of your quick, uh, tools? Well, I use the tab button. Yeah. The, the tab across instead of just hitting enter because it, you know, when you hit enter, it'll drop down a cell where if I'm tabbing across, I'd rather just type my information, hit tab. Uh -huh. but I know, I know I'm, I'm bumping something because it's kind of like with people that use a lot of Excel, they'll remove the F1 key so they won't hit it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of, I, I, that's all it is. It's just, but <sighs> just having issues today. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Oh my gosh, no, I don't want that. I'm gonna pause. Okay. So, going back to this, so we just finished entering in our accounts payable. So once again, we're not looking too good. We're owing a lot, a lot of money now. Okay, so now the last thing that we need to enter is going to be our bill into the subsidiary ledger. So here we have it. We're going to go ahead and locate LV Remodeling, which should be somewhere in the middle. Uh, 115. 115, 115. Perfect. Okay. So, date, once again, is now the 11th. Any notes that you want to place here, you could say interior design job. Okay. Invoice number, which is the 1754. Um, post reference, once again, general journal four. And did we, were we given terms? Four days. Yes, we were given net four. So in this case, no discount due date. However, what is the actual due date? 15th. The 15th of June. So we have to keep that in mind, okay? Obviously no prepaid amounts, okay? Um, what was my invoice amount? 1890, okay? And of course we didn't make a payment, so therefore we don't need to enter anything else here. Most cases you can't get a refund on the job. Um, you can complain that you are unsatisfied and what they'll normally do is they can't redo it. They can add modifications for you but definitely they'll never be, be able to return a service like that most cases if you're unsatisfied they'll give you a discount okay but in this scenario we're not going to be looking into any returns okay however the formula is still going to stay the same i just did a typo okay so once again your formula here is going to be your invoice amount minus any prepaid, minus any returns, minus any discounts, minus any payments. So therefore, since I made no changes except for one and one only, right? We only, um, you know, we only entered in an invoice amount. So therefore, I owe LV Remodeling 1980. Okay, eighteen ninety. Thank you. And once again, since I have the formula here, I can apply it all the way down um, to save myself some time. Okay. okay. So that is my subsidiary ledger. Once again, we didn't have to do anything with inventory, so let's go ahead and see what has happened next. Okay. 
So in yellow, what do I have here? You hired an employee. I hired an employee. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and unhighlight this so I can read a little better. So what's so great about this employee? What did I hire her for? What did I, or them for, whatever you want to call them. Barista. Okay, she's just an in-store clerk. Okay, oh, so she's... Fancy name, come on. Okay, she doesn't serve coffee, but she does the cash register, so she's the one that's going to be doing that. Um, so let's take a look at what her hours are. Are we going to be employing her for full, for full time? Yes. Yes, okay. She's going to get paid $8.50 per hour. Again, that's right... Uh, Right now, it's okay. Right now, back then, it, it exists. That was the minimum payment now, then. But there's no extra benefits because we can't afford it, okay? Because it costs way too much to provide Medicare or medical insurance. A 401k plan, we are not big enough to be able to. We're, we have $5,000 in the bank and we are in debt, 13000 There's no way we can afford benefits, Okay. And she can work up to 40 hours per week. So, again, she works Fridays through, thir through, 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 excuse me, Friday through Tuesday. Okay? So, she works five days a week. So, she's starting on Friday. Okay? And she can work to start work on the 14th of June. Okay? So, what is today? We're just simply hiring her. Right? So... Once again, the payroll period is bi-weekly. If you actually took a look at your calendar, um, which is included uh, in your um, Excel worksheet here, you can see that payroll is on the 14th and it's on the 28th. So she starts on the day of payroll. So therefore, she's not going to get paid anything. All right, so that's just to keep in mind. So our payroll period is starting on the 14th. I mean, paydays, excuse me, start on the 14th, okay? And um, we can talk about how that works later on, okay? So here we have an employee. What do we do with her? What do we do with her? Are we doing her paperwork? You could do her paperwork, but where would you place that paperwork? In the um, sub-ledger. Sub-ledger. Okay. So there it is. Okay, for the Word document, you guys have a separate um, employee or payroll paper. That's just going to include um, the payroll tax tables, Irene and... Uh, we're going to have a commissions worker. Okay. So here we have it, right? Here we are. She's on our employees list. So information that you can apply here is that we have a person. When is the pay date? Okay. In this case, she's not going to make it on the 14th. So her pay date is going to be the next one, which is going to be the 28th. Okay. What's her first name? Irene, her last name? Jameson. Jameson. Okay. Pay rate? 825. Is it 825? 8.50. Good. $8.50. So once again, total hours is going to be when we are subject to start uh, looking into her payroll. So in this case, that's all the information we need to place here, right? As we go through the payroll process, I'll let you know what her W-4 says, okay? But yes, we're just entering her in uh, through here, okay? Maybe because it's the, we're hiring her on the 11th, she may be subject to have to run a few tests for us, okay? Background tests, um, criminal tests, whatever it is. So, but she's scheduled to start on the 14th of Friday, her first work day is the 14th, okay? So that's all the information you really need to set here. It's just this information here, okay? Uh, we uh, declare, we don't have benefits, so that's good enough. All 
right. Okay. So now that we hired Irene, what el who else did we hire? Albert, Albert. Allen. <laughs> we hired Albert um, Allen. Now, what is he? He's a sales rep. He's a sales rep. And I'll tell you this. He is a 1099 worker. Okay? So that means I pay no benefits for this guy. Okay? However, what... How does he get paid? Commission based on total sales. He, his only job is to bring our customers into our store and he's in charge of a particular section in our sales. So in this case, he'll be in charge of all of the accounts receivable. Okay. While all the regular people who are just coming into store randomly, strangers, people who walk by, those ones we don't count because we don't have any information on them, okay? So Albert's going to be responsible to go find those relationships, call those people, get them to buy our product, and he gets to get a 10% cut, okay? For right now, that's all we can afford is a 10% cut. Now, of course, as the business grows, we can discuss and, you know, change that percentage, but for now... He can only make 10% of his profits. Okay. So with that being said, okay, benefits are deducted from commissions check. So um, again, but deductions meaning if we provide any fringe benefits. So um, if he's uh, if we can give him access to other stuff, then yes. Or employee discounts, that's a benefit. Um, but that take that's getting that takes away from his um, actual paycheck. Okay. Um, and he works, he's going to start working on the 17th of June. So mark the calendar that he's going to start on the 17th while Irene is starting on the 14th. Okay. And lastly, pay, uh, pay dates are the same as payroll period. So in this case, I he's going to be receiving a check the same days that uh, Irene gets a check. So that means... Um, he's going to get a check for every two weeks. Now, it's going to be based on how much money he earns or how many sales he's made. And what we're going to do is we're going to be making sure that the sales that he's done are completed and that he gets his 10% cut. So we're going to be calculating because we don't want to see any issues where he decides to throw in his own numbers in there. Okay, so here we are. Commission's uh, expense. We have our person, right? What the person's name is? Albert Allen. Okay. Okay. When is he going to start to uh, uh, work? He's going to start on the 17th. However, the pay date is going to be the 28th because he's going to miss the first pay date for sure. Okay. So there we have it. I have the date. The um, com uh, the person, the customer's name. I have the a question. Yes. Your screen's froze. I don't see anything typed on it. Yes, sir. This thing. Oh, I thought she already put the information in. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm explaining what this worksheet is. Oh, okay. Yeah, the only thing I typed in here was just Albert Allen. Okay, so yeah, so um, every time we encounter a customer, right, you're going li to list their name. Every time we send out an invoice, right, that guarantees a sale has been completed. All right, we have the sales amount, and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate 10% per sale he makes. So on the, uh, the last column on the right is going to be the total calculated commissions that he has earned, Okay. Now, another way that you can look at this, too, is that if you are, if you want to, I'm, I was debating on whether to create one or not, a sales order form. A sales order form allows you to get all the information, right? And if the uh, customer decides to cancel, you can see where it is. But in this case, uh, once again, we're not responsible to fill out those sales forms because he is. So that's the idea here. We're only making sure that when his sales, when he delivers them and that it's been completed, 
we record it here saying we sent out the invoice, we had the exact amount order uh, amount, and we're going to calculate the commissions for him. We're not in charge to fill out the sales order for Albert. He's responsible for that. So um, once again, if you need a sales order form, you can create one. Okay, it's going to be similar to the purchase orders, except you know other details. Okay, but well, like I said, it's, um, that's what I think it's necessary because we're not keeping track of the sales orders. He is. Okay, so just a few things I want to know, want to note here is that we will be calculating his. Um, uh, sales ten percent for every sales that he in that he makes. Okay, commission commission based worker. So therefore, whatever he earns, it's his money one hundred percent. We don't take any taxes away from him. Okay, so here's a perfect example of taking a look at an actual W two worker versus a ten ninety nine worker. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go ahead and do this last transaction right here, and then we'll go ahead and call break, okay? So what happened next? We are finally on a new date. It is now June 12th. What happened here? Let everybody know we're going to be opening. <laughs> what did you say? So we're going to let everybody know we're opening. Yes, we're going to let everybody know that we're opening by submitting a little advertisement in the Las Vegas register, okay? So in this case, all right, um, how much it will it cost me to run a, uh, what is that, a fourth of a page uh, newspaper article or ad in the newspaper? It's going to cost us $85, okay? And once again, this one's pretty straightforward. If you're going to run an ad in the newspaper, what kind of expense would that be? Advertising. Advertising, advertising expense. So let's take a look. What account number is advertising expense? 60000 60, Good. And how did we pay? We whipped out our credit card for the first time, and then we're going to pay with it for running the ad in the newspaper. So let's go ahead and journalize this. Okay. So a few things first, right? We recognize the date is now the 12th. We have a newspaper ad. Okay, so therefore we are incurring an advertising expense. which is account number 60,000 and it was for the amount of $85. Okay. And then for the business credit card, right? Now, when we charge our business credit card, what's our assumption here? Are we actually paying with our own money or are we owing other people money? You own something else. You're on the bank. You, uh, in this case, you own the credit card company, okay? It could be the bank if you get the credit card from your bank. Um, but yes, it's, it's not accounts payable. We actually have a specific account, account for it. Yes, visa payable because in this case, we're keeping our credit card transactions separate from the ones that we owe because in an other sense, you could think of it this way. A visa payable could essentially be known as a notes payable because you're not obligated to pay the whole thing at once. You're you can split your payments into um, as many payments as you like. Um, the only thing is that you have to make monthly payments and you have a minimum payment. Now, of course, you can charge $1,000 on it and say that I'm going to pay $5 a month. So how many, yeah, and then, so therefore, that um, visa payable could be considered 
something that you can owe for more than a year. But a second thing is that because the way credit card companies work is they don't let you owe them for a year. They let you owe them however you have to finance with them. And that you have to pay a minimum payment every month. Okay, usually the minimum payment straight away is $25. Okay. So there we have what's called a visa payable to keep track of our credit card transactions separate from everything else. Okay. And once again, we're making the payment for $85. So therefore, who was the vet, who was the uh, person I dealt with? Las Vegas RJ. Yep, Las Vegas RJ. Registered journal, whatever you want to call it. Um, there is no invoice number, but a few things that you could say here is one fourth page newspaper ad. Okay. And that it's going to run? you can if you like, if that's something that you want to keep in mind. Okay. Okay. When I actually do this for my um, subsidiary ledger, that's probably a perfect place to put that information as well. Okay. So there we go. Las Vegas Registered Journal. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and update my subsidiary ledger just to keep my accounts balanced. And this time, let's see, advertising expense is going to be an operating expense. Okay. Okay. It should be at the top of the page on this one. Very, very top advertising expense. And I'm going to go ahead and write the date. It's the 12th. You can write that you ordered a one-fourth page newspaper um, ad. Okay. A post reference, general journal number four. And I am debiting it for $85. Okay. Once again, since that was my very first um, transaction there. Therefore, my beginning balance is 85. And I'm going to format it real quick. Okay. All right, so that's my advertising expense. And then last but not least, I'm going to go to my liabilities once again. And instead of this time, I'm not going to be using my accounts payable account. I'm going to go ahead and use my Visa payable account. All right. So once again, this is why a bank reconciliation would be perfect for you because you can reconcile your credit card um, statements as well, right? That's a statement that you get at the end of the month. And that's definitely a way that you can keep track of one, your interest that you get charged two, what your expenses were and computing against what you actually recorded in your books. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're recording my transaction for this, okay? And here, your item here, your notes could be whatever you'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and write advertising, okay? Because your credit card is gonna give you the information on the exact vendor and the amount, but it's not gonna give you the reason why. So you can determine whatever the reasons why through your um, books. Okay, general journal number four, okay. And this time, because we are creating a liability, because at the end of the day, we're using a credit card company to pay for a uh, purchase for me. However, I have to owe the credit card company $85, okay. And once again, I'm gonna reformat this. Okay. So now I owe $85. Okay. All right. 
All right, last but not least, we have one more step, which is going to be updating my subsidiary ledger because I made a connection with a vendor. Now, if they, if they fail to um, run my newspaper ad into the newspaper, I can report them and say, hey, you didn't do this for me. I paid you, okay, et cetera, et cetera. And the great thing with a credit card is that it gives you the transaction number right then and there, okay? So that's even more of a proof of a transaction has occurred and you get the information instantly, okay? So let me go ahead and find my uh, LV uh, Las Vegas. I think it should be here. Uh, what was that one? 37. Right here. Yep. 137 Las Vegas RJ. Okay, so once again, date is the 12th. Okay, one fourth page um, newspaper ad. Okay, to run. Um, was it this, this, the, from the 4th? 15th through the 20th. Through the 20th. Good. Okay. The advertising is going to say, hey, come to my store. It's a grand opening. We'll give you a specific discount, whatever. Any way to entice your uh, customers to come in. Once again, no invoice number, post reference, general journal number four. Um, terms, obviously no terms here. Now here is the question here. My bill, my bill uh, or my receipt should reflect that I have an $85 charge. However, I paid with a credit card. So therefore, it's been paid for. Okay? However, I owe the credit card company money now. However, this transaction has been paid for. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note here that I paid with a visa. Okay? Well, once again... My uh, formula is going to be my invoice amount minus prepaid minus returns minus discounts minus payments. So you can go up to this, uh, to this vendor at any given time, say that, hey, I didn't see my newspaper, my ad in the newspaper, okay? Um, if, if for any reason that you need to either get a refund or discount or whatever it is that you need. So there we have it. I owe Las Vegas RJ nothing because I paid with a Visa credit card. Okay, transaction has been fully paid. Okay, and there we have it. Once again, no inventory was used at this moment. We didn't make purchases of inventory. We made a purchase of advertising flyers. So in this case... This transaction is completely done. And when we come back, this is what we're going to be doing next, okay? All right, so I'm going to stop here. We'll take a nice 20-minute uh, break, okay?